Now, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40, 4 0. Isaiah 4 0, the first five verses, 1 to 5. Sorry, uh, I didn't give you the text, but I know you're so good. Um, you can find that quickly. You see that? Yeah. Isaiah 40. Let's read it together. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Your God is talking. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, and she had received of the Lord's hand double blessings for what she has done. Verse 4. Let us take three. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places splain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and you all shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The mouth of the Lord is my emphasis. My topic is, there's no doubt when it comes from his mouth. I cannot doubt when God speaks directly. There are two ways God speaks, directly and indirectly. What do I mean by that? Well, a preacher comes up here or somebody speaks to you and God may be speaking through that person. It's God speaking, but indirectly. And sometime you may in your home or have a dream or an angel may visit you and God may speak to you directly. Which one you prefer? <laughs> I know that. I would love, well, well, let me explain this to you, you know, see if it, it doesn't equal the same thing. So say, Mick, I give, give Mick $100 and I say, Mick, I want you to give this to, let me see who, who needs $100 here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so, so Mick, I'm going to give you $100 and I'm going to give, tell you to give it to Sister Mary Barnes and tell her that I sent it and I love her, right? That's indirectly speaking to her. I'm using a medium, a messenger to speak to her. Or I could go to Mary herself and say, Hey, Sister Mary, here is $100. I love you and I appreciate you. Which one would you prefer? I would prefer the direct message, but the truth remains the same whether it comes through Mick or it comes from me. So when the word of God is coming to you from anybody, it is coming from the Lord and it is the truth of the message that matters, not the person. Can you give God praise? God can choose to preach, to speak to whoever he wants. My theme is the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. There are three things we have to watch in this passage. Who is the one speaking? Who is the one spoken to? And what is the message given? So we're going with those three sections of thought. Also in these three sections we will find out what is it God said. We will also find out what is it that God has done in these verses. And we will also find what God will do. So it's all about God talking, God acting, and God doing. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to the word. Comfort ye, comfort ye. When God uses a word twice, it's like saying verily, verily. It's double emphasis. 
God is emphasizing the point of comfort. The word comfort comes from a word that means is a medical term, and it means to soothe an irritation. It's a balm that when your skin or your, your body is irritated, this balm comes and comforts you. It brings soothing comfort. And God is saying, comfort, comfort ye, my people. I am here to bring the word of comfort to you. Why? Because some people are very uncomfortable in their lives right now. Amen. Situations are going on that's irritating you. That's frustrating you. You don't know where to turn. You don't know who to go to. You've tried the best doctors. You even tried some obia men. And nobody is bringing up any answers. You read their astrology column and there, are, there is no answer. I don't know who you're going to, but I have someone to point you to. The one who cannot fail. The one who never fails. The one who cannot lie. The one who will never fail you. Hallelujah. Somebody shout his name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Comfort ye. Now, he's not just saying that in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. God doesn't want you to be halfway comfort. God wants you to be, I'm not making this up, look, it's right. Let me read again. The God of all comfort. Who comforts us in all of our trials and tribulations. That we, when we get comforted, is not to make us comfortable. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort that we ourselves have been comforted by God. When God comforts you, it's not just to make you comfortable, but to help you to comfort others with the comfort that you got from God. He's a God of all comfort. Allow me to, to expand on that. You have a big bedroom, but you have a, uh, uh, what's the smallest bed? A twin. And you're twisting and you're turning in the twin and you're bouncing up each other. Is it wrong to ask God for a king-size bed? You have the room. He wants you to be comfortable. You're driving an old car and it's breaking down and you're spending more money on it. Do you think God wants you to be comfortable when you're in the road and you're pressing the brakes and you know it's going to hold? He's a God of all comfort. Say all comfort. He will comfort you in the morning with your cup of coffee. Just a simple cup of coffee. And you feel so good. He is a comforting God. And so he's saying through me to you, tell my people, comfort them. Comfort them. And uh, when he said speak comfortably, uh, the word comfortably changes a little bit. It is to a greater degree of tenderness. That when you speak to people giving them comfort, you don't bawl behind them. Hey, you! Be comforted! <laughs> you don't shout. You soothe. That's your plan. To bring a soothing word. Now, let's understand. There is a time when you will not compromise. There's a time when you have to speak the truth in love. But that's not what we're talking about now. We're talking about somebody, like I posted yesterday. You don't tell a drowning man. You don't give a lecture to a drowning man on how to swim. You save him first. You help him first. 
And when he's rescued, then you can give him lectures and counseling. So when you're going to help somebody, don't tell them on all kind of mistakes they have made and that's why you're in this condition and this is why this... No, 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 no. If you're going to help, help. And then talk. Then give your lecture. You're going to help me, don't lecture me first. You help me first and then you can talk all what you want. Speak comfortably. Speak soothingly. Put some sugar in your mouth. Not just in your coffee. We need some sweet tongue sometimes. That's why I like the young lady, Lisa. Anybody ever talk to Lisa? Sing here. She has more sugar in her mouth than a can of Coca-Cola or Sprite. You just love to hear the way she comes to you. Oh, Dudu, darling, you're so nice. You're so wonderful. You're so sweet. Come on! We have to soothe the people. You don't know how irritated they are. You don't know what brought them here. You don't know how frustrated they are. Speak comfortably to my people because the God of all comfort wants to comfort you so that you might be able to comfort others. What else is the Lord saying? He's also saying... And I love this part. Cry and tell Jerusalem, my people, that her warfare is finished. I love that. You've been fighting and fighting. You've been wrestling and wrestling. You've been holding on to things. And it's not making any sense. There is no progress. You think you're losing the battle. You felt you've lost the war. I have news for you. God is saying today that your warfare is finished. It's over. You have to take the word of God and believe it. If God said your battle plan is gone and your your battle, your warfare is over, I have to take it. If God said the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And when there should be no doubt when it comes from his mouth. And if he says your warfare is over, you stop fighting. There's a time when God will fight your battles for you. There's a time when you have to stand still and stay back and let God do the fighting. He's a warrior. He's the Lord of Shavuot. He's the captain, the commander-in-chief of the fighting armies of heaven. He knows how to fight. He will fight your battles. Give him a chance. Back away. Back away. Give him a chance. He says your warfare is over. It's finished. No more battles. No more wrestling. No more struggling. Just rest. Take a break. Because he's going to break the chains. Hallelujah. What else is he saying? He said, tell her her iniquity is pardoned. Now, watch this word pardon. It's different from being forgiven. You know, the president has pardoning power. Either the end of the term or during his term, he has the power to pardon a criminal. Every community can say, well, look, we forgive the man for what he's done. And there are times when we have to make sure that we're not just forgiving somebody for what they have done to us, but pardon them. If God have pardoned you, if God have thrown it out of your records and said you're free to walk again, you should be also able to pardon somebody. When you pardon somebody, you don't hold it against them. You don't say, you know, I forgive you, but I won't forget you. It has to be fully, 100% godly pardoning. So tell Jerusalem, I have pardoned her. And not just forgiven her. Now, this is a confusing statement, but it's not in the original. 
For she had received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. What it really means, and you can check it out anywhere and anytime, is that because I have punished her, because like Job, she suffered, I will give her a double blessing in the end. So whatever you're going through, you may think it's punishment, but it's not. God has been correcting you. God has been chasing you. God has been drawing you to himself. But when he's finished, double blessing is coming your way. As we always say, double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. God is going to double up your blessing. You expect in one promotion, you might get two levels of promotion. You're trying to buy one house, you may end up with two. God may give you an extra car. You never know. When he says double, he means double. We have a thing back home called doubles. I don't know if you eat doubles. It's, it's one layer of barra with china on top of it. Chickpeas. <clears throat> And you could eat that single, but no, they take another one and slap it on top of it and call it doubles. God's going to give you double. Say that with me. God's going to give me double. Hallelujah. Because he cannot lie. No doubt when it comes from his mouth. Don't doubt the Lord. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. Hallelujah. So that's what he said. Now let's see what he will do. In verse 4. He's talking about the journey. Every valley shall be exalted. I don't know about you, but I've been in the valley many times. Yea, though I walk through the valley... Every sheep must walk in that valley. The shepherd, though I walk to the valley of the shadow, not substance, the shadow, it looks deadly. It looks harmful. It looks scary. It's look, it looks frightening. But yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I walk through the valley of the shadows of the, I will fear no evil. No evil. Because the Lord is with me. How many of you are sure the Lord is with you today? Well, I have more news for you. He's not only with you, he's in you. He's not only in you, he's above you. He's not only above you, he's beneath you. Underneath are the everlasting arms of God. He's not only up, he's behind you. He's in front of you. He's on your right side, on your left side. You are surrounded by the presence of God. Hallelujah. And he will lift up those valleys. And you see them high mountains you cannot climb? He will lower them on those hills. What he's going to do? He is going to give you level grounds to walk on. He's going to level the ground for you tomorrow. And you see this yo-yo? This yo-yo up and down walk, he's going to stop it. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So that's one thing he's going to do. The second thing is, he will make the crooked path straight. You see, anything like this is of the serpent. This is how a serpent moves. Crooked. And sometimes we end up in a path that we chose but didn't know how it will end. And so all the crooked path, God said he will make them straight. Straight. And you will not have to worry if you're going on the right road. You know, somebody said, it's only a bend, it's not the end. Well, you will no longer be confused as you go around these bends and you are uncertain about what tomorrow brings. He's going to make the road so straight you can see miles ahead. He wants to give you clarity about your tomorrow. 
He wants to make sure that you understand his plans. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I have plans to prosper you. I have plans to make you, give you a good future, not to harm you. You know why we get harmed? It's because we made our own plans and we followed them ourselves. And we end up on a dead end street. Not only will he lift up the valleys and lower the mountain, give you level ground. Not only will he make the crooked paths straight, but there will be no more meandering. There will be no more zigzag. You're not moving from one side to the next side. You'll be walking straight. And hear this. A, a straight man can walk on a crooked road. But a crooked man can't walk on a straight road. So to walk on a straight road, you got to be straight. And I mean straight in every way. Third thing that he will do, he said, and I will make the rough places smooth. Palestine is full of rocks, even in the roads. There are many, many pebbles, stones, sharp rocks. They had no bulldozers to clear them then. But God said, I'll be your bulldozer. I will clear your path from the rocks so that you don't stumble. When you walk in the dark, you will not stumble. God wants to protect your feet. And so, this is why the word of God is here. For thy word is a light unto my pathway. And it's a lamp to my feet. And when you follow this word and you walk in faith, your path tomorrow will be smooth. You will no longer stumble on obstacles. And he's not going to get rid of everything in your life, but he knows what he's doing. I will believe the promises of God and I will take them to my heart. By the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Let me get ready to wrap up here. Isaiah 55, 1. Isaiah 55, 1 is a beautiful verse. Make that 55, 11, put the next one to it. So, <clears throat> Shall my word be that giveth forth out of my mouth? He's confirming again. The words that come from my mouth, it shall not return unto me empty or void. But it shall accomplish. It shall perform. It shall do that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Let's do two or three applications with that. Firstly, Jesus Christ is the Logos. He is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and when we beheld him, we beheld him as the glory of the Father, the only begotten. So when God sent Jesus, he sent his word. He sent the logos. And Jesus Christ accomplished everything that the Father wanted. That is why he said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Can you say praise God if you understand where I'm going? Jesus did not return to heaven without accomplishing the entire plan and will of God for man's redemption. It's finished. It's over. There's resurrection power in your voice. And I'm going to steal what you said. Speak life to your dead things. Because it shall not return void. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I'm wrapping up here. In Genesis. And the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the 
earth became void. Jehovah Bohu. It means something happened to it. It became chaotic. And the world was overflown with the flood. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the world. And restoration began. And this is how it began. And the Lord saw the darkness. And the Lord said, let there be light. And there was light. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Maybe your world is dark. Maybe something came and upset your world and brought chaos into your life. And there is confusion and darkness. And you're not sure what to do. The word of the Lord is saying to you, let there be light in your dark world. And there will be light. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. There is no doubt. There is, should be no doubt when it comes from the Lord's mouth. My last scripture to you is, man shall not live by bread alone. I don't care how nice your wonder bread is and how good it tastes with cheese and peanut butter. Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Come on, people. That's how you live. You live by the strength of the spoken word. When he speaks a word into your life. You see, we have the logos. Then we had the written word. Then we had the rima, the spoken word. What is that? There are times when you will hear the word, it means nothing to you. But there are times when you hear the simple verse that you heard all the time, repeatedly. Something dramatically seizes you. The Spirit of the Lord takes that word and applies it to your heart. You feel something strong inside. And you say, aha, that's for me. I can feel it. That's the rima. And I pray that you will live and not die. I pray that the word of the God will be your source and your strength. For man shall not live by bread alone. I've seen healthy people die. I've seen young people die. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. If you take this word and ingest it and make it your food for your soul. You will not only live in time, but you will live for eternity. There is no doubt. When God. When it comes from God's mouth. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Amen. Are you feeling comforted? Do you feel God has spoken to you in such a way that you're leaving this place better, stronger, more encouraged, ready to serve God, come what may? Hallelujah. Okay, so let me do a little prayer before they come because I've been asked to pray. Uh, first, I want to pray for you. If you think any of this word has been a portion for you and you want it solidified in your life, just go ahead and stand. Let me pray with you. Let, you see, a pastoral prayer is a powerful thing. It's because we have been given the privilege in the office, not in who I am. I am a nobody. I have faults like everybody else. I always like to illustrate the power between the person and the office. And I always use Mr. Obama as a classic example. When he was in office, the very last hour in office, the man had power. The moment he stepped out of the office, 
He was an ordinary man and he didn't have the power that the office gave him. And when you are sitting in this pastoral high priestly office, there's a certain amount of authority given to you. And when you move out of this office, that privilege is gone. I am your senior pastor. I have many pastors here that are helpers. But the prayer of this pastor should do something for you. Lord, in Jesus' name, your servant and your servants here humble ourselves before you. We come in the mighty, powerful, all-conquering name of Jesus. And I say, Lord, let your word become flesh. Let your word materialize in the hearts of your people. Comfort them. Comfort them all year long. They're already worrying about Christmas. They're already worrying about Thanksgiving, where the turkey's going to come from, oh God. Help them not to worry. Comfort. Let them know their sins have been forgiven and pardoned. Let them know the warfare is ended. And they don't have to fight anymore. Thank you, Lord. Let them know that every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain shall be brought low. Let them know their future walk and journey is smooth. Let them know, oh God, from your word, let this word repeat itself in their heart. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hallelujah. We pray for Sister Noreen's dad, Lionel Prince. Lord, that you will have your way in his life. Wherever he's at right now, you will touch him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the Singh's family, their daughter who was in the army. Whatever's going on in her life, we destroy it. We come against the forces that threaten her. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we set her free. By the power of Jesus' name. We pray for Sister Janice this morning, who is not well. Yes, Lord. You will touch her, Lord, and you will help her. And all the others whose hearts are crying out to you. Cry, Jerusalem, cry! For the Lord's air is not deaf, it's not heavy. He will hear you. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pronounce a blessing upon this people. I pronounce a blessing upon your servants, your ministers, and those who are here and those who are not here. In Jesus' conquering name, the people of God believe and say, Amen. say, Amen. say, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 Praise Pastor the Watson. Lord.